Did you see Jeb? It's cool. <laughs> Can I confess? I like him. <laughs> I really like him. And then I should do Jeff Corley's test level one, climbing up to the chair and then jump. <laughs> and it's too high for me. <laughs> But、uh, he has his wingsuit and he can fly. And then I have my wingsuit, note and pen. And of course, I cannot fly, but I can fly my ideas sometimes. <laughs> and then I hope you guys can fly your ideas after my presentation, and then there's no risk. <laughs> okay, let's start. So I'm Hideshi Hamaguchi. And then hello, Portland again. <laughs> and then thanks, very thanks, TEDx team, speakers, and then you know, performers. This is a great experience. And then, great theme, uncharted territory. And today, I like to talk about idea creation, which is a very difficult theme. But you guys always do some idea creation, right? And then I usually talk about why I'm doing and how I'm doing, and also what I did. But today, we have short time, and then you know, you know what I did. So I just want to focus on how and why a little. So, this is today's agenda. <laughs> and then, idea creation. I like to make more focus. Okay? I just want to focus on the first step of idea creation today.、Okay? I'm not talking about the entire process, just the first moment.、Okay? Really, really first moment. What we should do. This is the question, and this is the theme of today.、Okay? So, I'm going to talk about the most important approach that I found in my long, long business journey. And then I'm just talking about one approach, just one approach. So it's easy. Okay, so going to the uncharted territory, this is one approach. But today I'm going to propose rechart. Okay, so what the rechart is? What the rechart is? So if you have a chart, there are three ways to approach this chart. Number one, of course, on the chart. Okay, go along the street, it's safe, you get to the point. And of course, next one, off the chart. Getting out, a little bit risky, but you're going out. This is uncharted territory. So the third one <laughs> is rechart. So redefine the chart and showing the new direction. This is rechart. If you see the on chart, this is like a low risk, low return you know, strategy because a lot of people explore already. And then off the chart, of course, high risk, high return. And the rechart is something interesting. It's a kind of like a low risk because we know the territory. And then we go into the new direction. So there's some high reward. So this is the offering that I'm talking today. So rechart helps us to explore the new idea in our territory. And of course, new idea is very connected to the innovation. And then in my theory, the innovation is something new, something doable, and something controversial. Because, for instance, if I say, let's go to the moon by this remote controller, wow, it's new, but it's not doable, so it's not innovation. But sometimes the innovation is so strong, and in that case, it comes with a big, big uncertainty, so it's created a controversy. So this is the nature of the innovation. Anyway, so the rechart might be connected to the innovation. So, 1999, Portland, USA, Oregon, I recharted. It's, a, it's about the casual data management, and I just draw this chart. It's very simple size of data, experience, and then we're talking about the data is getting larger and larger because of the Microsoft, PowerPoint, and also digital camera.、Okay? But the floppy disk is so small. And a lot of people said, but there's new technologies, wireless.、Okay? And then everything going to wireless, it's going to be intangible. And then I rechart it. Is that true? Is that true? Do we need, still we need some sort of tangible experience? Yes, this is my data. This is your data. Let's exchange something like that. So this is the chart number one, but with this simple chart, finally we came with, up with this USB flash memory.、Okay? Rechart is very powerful. 
So let's talk about why. And I have to talk about my business journey. It was a long time ago, <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> Not in the galaxy, far, far away. <laughs> it's in beautiful Kyoto, 1990. After working two years in a big corporation, starting from P, Panasonic, <laughs> and then I found something wrong in the big corporation. And then this is the first historical diagram that I drew in my business history. So it's very simple. Concept, strategy, execution. This is kind of like a process. You know, if you, go, if you do some business, okay, if you do some business, you have to go through this. Even you, you know, doing R&D or product planning or manufacturing process, you have to have a concept. And then you have the strategy to make the concept happen and execute. Okay? This is a kind of like a normal process. And then I put the y-axis, degree of freedom, and you see, degree of freedom looks like this. Of course, beginning of the concept, we have, we have a high degree of freedom. We can do anything. But the, at the end of the concept building, we should reduce the degree of freedom. And of course, after strategy building, we have a strategy A, B, C. It reduces the degree of freedom. So the nature of the business is reducing degree of freedom, right? If you don't do that, we cannot execute. But the interesting part is resource allocation. It looks like this. Something wrong. We spend a lot of, lot of hours when we have small degree of freedom, and then we don't spend an hours when we have a big, big, free of, a big degree of freedom. It's something in balance. And this reminds me, 100 years ago, like a Titanic. <laughs> In a big corporation or small corporation, we are cleaning up the table and having a good dinner, have a good you know, music, but the ship is going to the iceberg. Okay? <laughs> So why is this happening? Why? <laughs> First, I thought, lack of intelligence. <laughs> We're insane. <laughs> but I found it's lack of tool. This is very you know, important information. For instance, if I are asked to, for instance, make some accounting system, I can spend infinite hours on ex execution. But if I go to the concept field, and if I ask somebody, OK, could you, you know, come up with a new pen? Okay? And if I give you five minutes, you can use five minutes effectively. If I give you one week, I know on Wednesday, you come to my desk and you say, can I go to Powell to see the book? Yes, you may. And then on Friday, I know you come to my desk and say, ask me, can I go to Oregon Zoo to get some inspiration? I'd like to see the tiger. <laughs> okay? So you're stuck. And if I give you 365 days, I'm sure you cannot spend effectively 365 days because there's no tool. So this is a kind of like a statement that I got. And then what I did is go along this journey. Okay? And then I done more than 300 projects. And then 70% failure ratio. This is the reason why I'm not in a base jumping industry. <laughs> But after this, I found a very critical moment, a very critical moment on this chart. This is this beginning. That's a moment of first step, zero to one, and then the first constraint we made, and then we got the freedom, zero, and then determining the future, and then creation. So the question is, can only genius create the great, unique one? Can only genius, yes or no? What do you think? Good. Yes. <laughs> My answer is no. <laughs> the reason why, if it's yes, so sad. The corporate has to change their strategy. How to find out the genius, how to bring the genius to the company, how to feed him, how to make a golden egg, how to make the golden egg to the chicken. So that's, that's the strategy. So I thought we have to come up with some methodology. And then about how. So I found very big finding. We don't have to start from zero. Okay? Actually, we have one. Because we start the thinking. Okay? It, 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 it's hard to think nothing. Okay? We have something. So the news is if we regard it as a bias and then shift it a little, we can create completely new ideas. So we don't have to start from scratch. We just seek for the bias. Okay? So break the bias. This is the key. 
Okay? So if I have to make something new, I will get 100 people. Okay? Like these kind of people, Portlandias <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> and then let them make a brainstorming. Here's a beautiful ideas, some trees. <laughs> and don't see the dot. Okay? What I'm going to see is their way of thinking. Okay? If I understand how they think, thinking pattern, okay? and the common bias, I can break it. So this is the key. Okay? So it's all about brain. Okay? So the idea is made in our brain, not on the air. Even we're collaborating. You know, the idea is made in himself or herself or myself. Okay? And then idea will be consumed by the users. Idea will be coming from our competitors. It's all about brain. So the brain has a bias. And if I show some idea which is close to the bias, they feel no. And then if I show the opposite side, they feel, wow, this is different. This is it. Okay? So how we can find the break the bias? There's the three rules. Number one, keep structured chaos mode. What, what's the structured chaos mode? Be creative. Easy. <laughs> brain again. So you have to think about, understand the brain. Okay? In your brain, there's two modes, very structured mode versus very chaotic mode. Okay? Very mathematic, very you know, artistic. Okay? So what's the profile of creativity? A lot of people draw in this way. Structure, low. Chaotic, high. This is not true. The real curve looks like this. It's a bell curve. So the sweet spot is sitting in the middle. I call it the structure chaos. This is a sweet spot. Your creativity exists. So the problem is like a ball putting on a mountain. The ball easily slips to this side, that side. If you work for the big corporation, go to the structure side. If I work with a venture company, it's go to the chaotic side. So how we can control it? Number one, go back and forth. If I ask somebody to come here, and in the one minute, could you make a presentation about the new pen? <laughs> so he got to the chaos mode. And after that, I asked him, oh, I'm sorry, but the, can you come up with the pen using the three components? He can structurally think about it. So go back and forth. It increases the possibility to hit the top. Okay? Number two, control. So it's about the brain. So your brain using some media, right? And then control the media. If you start using a number, formula, your brain goes to the structure side. And then if you use the inspirational picture, beautiful drawing, your brain goes to the chaotic side. Okay? So if you use diagram, like a, like, like a bad diagram, or some doodling, it helps you to keep your brain in the structured chaos mode. So this is my like a notebook. You see? There are a lot of doodles and diagrams and doodle notebooks and the floor. <laughs> so the diagram and doodle is like this. This is my definition. You know, simple, visual, logical diagram. Deform, approximate, visual. This is doodle. Anyway. So keep the structured case mode. This helps you a lot. And then let's go to the next one. Visualize the bias. Okay? If you don't visualize, you cannot break it. You cannot break the air. You have to see the structure. Okay? So let's say, after you know, structure your chaos back and forth, you find some seven ideas. Can you, find, can you point the bias from this seven dot? No, you cannot. But if I give some structure like this, you see? Here's some line. Visualization help you. Okay? And then you can create the strategy to break this bias. For instance, going opposite. Okay? Forget about B and go A. Okay? This is a very extreme one. Or compromise. You see, you can, you can control. But if you do this compromise or extreme, still on the bias, so the people feel, oh, I knew it. So what you have to do is this, break the bias. I don't know what D means, but as long as you know what you have to break, it's a first step. Visualize the bias. Number three, shake the chart. Shake the chart. So this is a chart. Can you shake? Shake it. <laughs> So there are three components. The chart has objective and also scope, where you should think, and also in the scope, how to understand. So scope, objective, perspective. This is a kind of like an element. So these are biased, and there's a bunch of ways to shake it. For instance, objective. If you come up with a little bit higher objective and see it, you will see the different picture. If you have different perspective, you see a different thing. 
If you have a wider scope, narrow scope, you have a different you know, view, of, view, of view. Let's see this. Scope. So if you see this wide scope, oh, mountain, beautiful river. Narrow. Oh, Hideshi is playing on the boat and saying, what, how? <laughs> and the middle, waterfall. <laughs> Actually, he's screaming. So if you see this, <laughs> if, if you change the scope, if you change the scope, the perspective will change, objective will change. Center one, I have to help him. Uh, if you like me, you have to help me. <laughs> and then, you know, in the river, you have to give some toy. Okay? So it's, it's completely changed. Scope change, inference, all of these. Okay? So these are all connected. So you can, you can start touching anywhere, but it helps you to, you know, shaking the models, shaking the, you know, chart. And it helps you to find out the bias and then break the bias. Okay? Shake the chart. So this is it. Keep the structural chaos mode. Visualize the bias. Shake the chart. And then this gives you the high possibility of finding out, the break, finding, out, finding out and breaking the bias. So the first step of idea creation, yes, first, break the bias. The important part, don't focus on idea. It's kind of like a tricky because you have to create the idea. No, you should not focus on idea. You have to understand how people think, how we think, and then break the bias. And then thank you. And as like a Steve Jobs, one more thing. <laughs> so do you know the formula of innovation? It's simple. This minus this is this. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then, aha, uh -huh, great. So this is a formula of you know, innovation. And then, you know, breaking bias create first what? Thank you very much.